Welcome to um, next to last live Q&A webinar of uh, Public Administration 6123 Economic Development. I know you all have a couple of weeks left. We've got uh, three additional assignments that we're working on. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the final project that I know that some of y'all are working on. Um, I know that um, I hope that there aren't any uh, people ha are able to listen in. I've had to go on to um, on to Wi-Fi because uh, we're dealing with thunderstorms here in downtown Rocky Mount and the storms are coming towards Greenville right now. So we're going to keep this session short. Um, but uh, obviously, I uh, know that uh, teams and individuals are working on their final projects uh, and that, uh, that everybody is working on those right now. I'm pulling up just to verify the dates and everything for those. So if you give me just a second. But just to kind of cover uh, the, the final project information in terms of the due dates. Some have already submitted their draft presentation and I appreciate that. Um, the, the presentation is due on the 20th. If, uh, if I'm correct, the presentation, the draft presentation is due on the 20th, which is this, um, which is this Thursday. It's due at midnight, uh, by midnight, Thursday night, 11.59 p.m. Uh, I'll do something real quick. Okay, hold on just a second. Uh, it's for some reason it's changed how you do screen sharing here in this setup. So I'm not going to be able to share the screen at this moment. They tell me I got to load an extension. But um, just to tell you, um, the, uh, the the draft your draft presentation is due by um, Thursday the 20th at 11:59 p.m. Um, and that is for your group or for you as an individual. And that is a draft PowerPoint file, which will include the slides and notes for each slide. Uh, so type those into the notes field for each of the slides. Next Tuesday, I'm sorry, next Wednesday, the 26th at 1159 a.m., is when your final report and presentation are due. And this is a Word document as well as the recorded slideshow or a video file. You will also have a chance uh, to, if you would like to present your uh, presentation in person, I will be on campus Monday. Um, and I'm just gonna type, I'm typing it into the chat right now. And the on-campus presentations can be done next Monday, which is April 24th, from 7 to 9 p.m. in Brewster C, room 105. Uh, so if you are in Greenville and you want to do a presentation uh, in person, uh, you can do that. Now, the only thing that I ask is that you email me that you want to do the presentation in person. Um, that way I can see if anybody actually does uh, if there's if there's nobody that wants to do a, a live presentation, then what I will do is uh, we'll do everything either by webinar, we'll do a webinar that night, or uh, you just submit it. But I, I do want to give the option for people, if they would so like, uh, to be able to do presentations in person, but you will need to email me. Uh, to let me know. So so that is something just to uh, keep in mind. But live presentations can be done on campus. I will be there next Monday, April 24th, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. in Brewster Hall, Area C, room 105. Um, if you decide you don't want to do that and you just want to submit your video file or recorded slideshow where you record narration into the slideshow document uh, of PowerPoint, you can submit that and have that all submitted by 11.59 a.m. Eastern next Wednesday, the 26th. The, um, the e I sent an email out on uh, Blackboard earlier today that talked a little bit about the final. Um, there are some, some, some files that I will be sharing with you. Um, probably I'm gonna be sharing some files with you tomorrow 
uh, either tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening. Uh, it's just some some background information, and then there'll be some files that I will share at the time for the final. Uh, it won't take too long to do, but uh, what the final will entail is an opportunity to look at the, the final, of course, will cover the information that we've talked about uh, in the midterm as well as some other subjects. And I apologize because of dealing with the storm. I don't have an outline up, uh, but I will be posting a presentation uh, on YouTube tonight or tomorrow that will list what the final what, what topics are eligible for being considered in the final exam. Um, and that final will be distributed. I believe my plan is to distribute it Thursday the 27th, and then it will be due by 11.59 p.m. on May 2nd. So you'll have from April 27th when the, when the final will be distributed and published on the Blackboard until May 2nd to complete the final exam. Um, and then the last part is uh, those of you who have been working on uh, your readings and your writings, uh, your your reading assignments, those are due, uh, if I'm correct, uh, I've set, um, as either, I'm trying to remember if, uh, hold on just a second, um, make sure I have the right date for that. Um, but I had sent information about that as well. The Blackboard posts are due on uh, are due on Friday the 21st by 11:59 p.m. So, um, what that means is that the Blackboard posts are due by the 21st. So you have to have submitted both Blackboard posts into the discussion group, and you need to at least provide some time for people to discuss. So either y'all as students need to be prepared to do some discussion Friday night if you're going to turn them in late. Uh, I do plan on looking at them Wednesday night. I've looked at them some, but I haven't been discussed. I haven't been doing much discussion, uh, but I do plan on asking some questions of each article probably on Wednesday. Not expecting you as the person to, it's not going to affect your grade if you don't answer it, uh, but I do want to follow up with some of the uh, articles and such, but I will make sure to do that with each of you. But uh, the important thing is to remember uh, to go ahead and get yours in sooner and later. Most of you have done at least one. Uh, I think everybody's pretty much done at least one. Some of you've already done both of them, and that's great. Uh, so probably sooner than later this week, if you haven't, go ahead and do your readings and post about them in uh, the discussion board uh, of the Blackboard site for our class so that we can go ahead and proceed with that. So that's a covering of the assignments we have left. Uh, again, three assignments left. We have uh, your final project, your article write, your article writings, and the final. Are there any questions of anybody at this time? Okay, five and six grades. I have I have assignment five graded. I was waiting to finish up assignment six before I handed out grades for assignment five. Uh, I had assignment six about 80% graded until I had to stop last week and I haven't been able to get back to it, but I will finish assignment six tonight. Uh, you should have both assignment five and six grades distributed to everybody tomorrow. So y'all will have those grades tomorrow, but I do apologize uh, for the inconvenience. Um, I'm going to go ahead. You will get it at some point tomorrow. Um, so you will have all of your grades caught up. And are there any other questions? Yes, um, if you get them in, by Thursday, I will make the time to review the presentations and offer some comments. They will not be extensive, but there will be comments given out on Friday. So everybody should get comments. If, if I know there's, I've received two drafts, and I'm going to try to get those comments out tomorrow. And I will try to get some out. I will not be available to do anything on Wednesday. But uh, my goal, will, but, but everybody should have their comments by Friday. Uh, just to let just to let everybody know. So your comments on your draft, if you turn it in on time on Thursday, you should have comments to you on Friday.
Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, any max length on final paper? There is no maximum length, but and I'm just I'm writing this, I'm writing this first and then I'll read it. Here's my feeling. There's no maximum length, but professionals do not like to read filler. Um, there are a lot of papers out there that uh, the biggest complaint a lot of times that practitioners have of academics and those who are research only professionals are that they write incredibly long papers that could have been better summarized with much shorter, um, with more, in a much shorter format and been more effective. I don't know if they do this with you at East Carolina, but there are MPA programs out there where they reinforce and ingrain ad nauseum the importance of that probably the first five years of your professional career in government, particularly in local government or in an agency environment, in those first five years, the chances of you being able to present anything where more than one page of the document will be read by your supervisor is practically non-existent. So they reinforce the importance of being able to write a good one page paper that you need to be able to, con you, you should have all your backup ready. Uh, if the questions are asked, they'll ask you questions. There's nothing wrong uh, with expecting questions. And I think that's the hardest thing sometimes to remember. And it took me time. It takes every professional time to learn this as they go from classroom, those of you particularly who are traditionals or those of you who haven't had as much professional experience uh, before you've reached uh, this point in your academic career, uh, you write because you're writing for, you write based on your audience today. And that audience could be a professor or it could be somebody that, that that's writing, that's where you're writing research or you're writing background. When you're writing as a practitioner, obviously you're trying to write a goal, an objective. You're trying to write about drawing a conclusion or taking a course of action. And, and the fact of the matter is, usually when you are hired as a professional, there is the belief that you are being hired with, the, with, your, with your supervisor's understanding that you know something about the subject matter you're talking about. They're not going to necessarily worry if you've written it based on showing that you've completed the scientific method or that you've completed a, a, a thorough analysis. What they want to see is they want you to identify the problem. If there are multiple options, identify what those options are, provide a very concise review of the pros and cons, and most importantly, identify a recommendation and a course of action. And you've got to be able to do all this uh, within the confines, usually, of one page. Once you've gone for about five years and you get your first promotion, then you're given that second page, maybe. And then it all depends on who your supervisor is. Some supervisors, it doesn't matter what level you are, you only get one page. That's when you have to learn how to write, how to write in reverse, how to write your final recommendation first and then back it up or or and it's not like you're writing the executive summary to a research report what you're really doing is writing um uh your your intended audience um uh, if you've seen the uh, example think of it as that it, it, uh, it's internally uh, it's a let me think about that for a second um i'm going to look at it real quick Because that is a good question about the intended audience. My um, your your intended audience for the PowerPoint um, is a government entity. 
And also, I would say your intended audience is a government entity, entity, but it's intended for the practitioners. So, for example, if you're in an economic development office, it would be intended for someone like Mr. Higgins, like 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 uh, like our our first um, our first speaker, uh, the person from the first interview I had you see in week one. It would be someone like him. That's who your audience is. Um, or there will be another professional economic developer featured in a video that's going to be coming to you this week, and he would be your audience. So those are your intended audiences for the presentation, as well as for the report. Um, so you're you're kind of you are dealing with people who work in government, but they're t so it's not as it's not going to. I don't expect it to be slick marketing for the developer, because chances are. Uh, that, that you have to learn about communications before we can cover that. Uh, some of you probably have some experience in that, but doing something real slick for a developer, there is a likelihood that if you don't know how to do it, you're going to learn about it when you go out into the field, regardless of the field of, of, of government or public service you're going into. So the intended audience is a government entity, but it's intended to be for senior level. So they're still expecting a summation where you're really focused, where you're able to cover information at a high level with the idea that the paper is there to where you show that you're summarizing the high level and that you've got the background there as well, that you show that you've done that level of work. But really looking more at your ability to structure and present conclusions and present recommendations with the backup supporting it. Um, that's the goal. I hope that clearly explained the answer to uh, your question, Cindy. Um, I when I read okay exam exemptions, I read the documentation, and it didn't sound like when I was reading the class schedule that I can give exemptions. Um, so don't expect one. What I will tell you is that if you feel that you have gotten an A, when you see what the final is, I think you will say to yourself, you know what, this is an exercise I should be doing. I realize everybody's got tough, um, tough, tough, has got some time commitments, including especially those of you who are working in working jobs. Um, I am too. We're in the middle of budget. But I think it's it's because a lot of this is about uh, application, ex creating applications, and, and the final is going to be more focused on work product. It's not going to be, uh, it's going to be more of a work product st uh, case. I think you will, you will find that it will be uh, worth it to, to, to do the final, but unfortunately, I don't think I am allowed, uh, based on how I read the course schedule and based on how I read some of the stuff that I'm allowed to give, uh, because of the fact that this is an online course that I'm allowed to give an exemption. Uh, from what I understand, I'm not. Uh, as for selling our project to the governing board, yes, that is who you're, well, yes, you're selling it to the board of, of the agency, correct? That's what you're doing. You're selling it to the governing board. That's a good way of doing it, yes. So Cindy's correct, to Cindy's, I'm gonna, let me just type this in here. Yes, yes, that is what you are doing. Selling, if when you're thinking about your targeted audience, the best way to describe it is that you are selling it to the governing board to try to say that they should support this. So, are there any other questions? Now, my plan is that I will schedule a, another Q&A session before I distribute the final. It will probably be, it will not be on next Monday, the 24th. It will probably be at another time. Um, so there will be an opportunity between when I hand out, when I send out the review presentation about what the final is going to cover, which will be later next day or two. And when we actually, when I distribute the final, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. 
Uh, I am probably thinking it will be next Wednesday or probably be next Wednesday evening. Um, so I pretty much have to do it either that Tuesday or Wednesday night. Um, it, and it will be recorded, obviously. So uh, we, I will follow up with people. I don't believe anybody is going to have any classes at night after this week, except maybe Mon I don't think anybody's going to have any classes next week, um, unless I'm wrong. If any of you have classes next week, uh, that might cause a conflict, but I think classes end. Obviously, some of you may have, and you shouldn't have any final starting until Wednesday, so you would not necessarily have the final on Tuesday. Um, Okay, 6160 does meet next Tuesday. Okay, um, what we may do is I might wait. And what time does 6160 end? Does it end at nine o'clock? Okay, 6160 ends at nine o'clock on Tuesday. Are there is, I will look also at the Wednesday schedule. So either next Tuesday night or next Wednesday night, we will schedule to have a Q&A and we will wait until after nine o'clock to do it. So we will probably do it at 930 um, to give people a chance to ask questions. Um, so final review Q&A. So just to say final review Q&A webinar will be either next Tuesday or Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. So either Tuesday night or Wednesday night of next week, and I'll decide in a couple of days, we will have a webinar at 9.30 p.m. It will be recorded and it will be made available. If anybody has questions that they want to ask, you can obviously email me directly. Um, but if if not, then um, we, will, we will do that. Are there any other questions? Are there any other questions? How long should the presentation be? Uh, I was thinking I had mentioned that in the, um, I was thinking I had put that in the, yeah, three to five minutes. That's what I thought. Um, three to five slides, three to five minutes. Um, you want to keep it, I would say, no more than six or seven. You, you got to remember, chances are, uh, let me go ahead and tell you, let me go ahead and tell you, um, tell you from my own experience. I've been working here in this budget office here in Rocky Mount for 10 years. I've been doing professional budgeting now for 15 years. So I have been working as a daily public sector professional for a pretty good amount of time. Um, the type of this kind of work, like this kind of work when you're dealing with policy, which this is policy, this kind of technical work, usually when you are having a meeting, there's not a lot of time you're going to be given to present it. Usually it's going to be like item four or five of a five item agenda. And it's usually going to come at the end after they've already had the meat of their discussion about things that are bigger, broader issues that the public wants to talk about, like uh, police or fire. When you're actually having to talk about – now, when you're able to talk about a particular industrial client coming and what you've got to do at that point for one particular client, yeah, they'll spend an hour talking about that because that's when it's actually time to make decisions. But as you see with this exercise, you're doing you're talking about like initial investigation work, like trying to do analysis work and very deep data. And you're trying to get across some very simple ideas that have required a lot of a lot of investigation. So you're not you're not going to want to spend the time a lot of time and you're not going to have a lot of time. There are times when I do presentations where. I might have only five minutes to present something that other times I might have 15 minutes to present. So you've got to think from this level, and I have to look at it from the perspective of 
that most students are at a position where they're going from a, a field or some level of supervisory role into more of the professional level. That's general. I realize that's not true for everybody. But because of that, I realized that the amount of time that you have to make a presentation to a group, and I know because some of you are obviously fellow employees here at the city, I know some of you have done this with council, so I know it may not always apply equally. But the reality is you never go into a room thinking you're ever going to have more than five minutes with a governing body or five more than five minutes with your senior leadership unless they tell you you're going to have more time and you're the only item on the agenda. Um, that can be true at a regular council meeting. It can be true at a retreat. It can be true anytime. Um, you never go in there thinking that you're going to have th that you're going to have more than just the bare minimum of time to get a point across, uh, because the reality is there's a lot of material. And when it comes to doing policy and technical work, that's not necessarily something that elected officials like to spend a lot of time on. Uh, that's why they hire staff to do it. And also that is why, uh, I mean, they, they want to hear what you recommend and you go from that. Um, will I be doing Q and a, um, interesting question. I, my intention is if you decide to participate, um, if you decide to participate in the live session, I will, I may do some Q and A, but I'm not going to, I am not going to count it in your grade. What I'm looking at is the initial presentation. That's what I'm looking at. Um, a lot of times when people make these presentations, um, okay, use, do we have to use any information from our assignments or should we focus? If, if you feel that the information from those assignments can help, you should. But again, you should also be looking at what you're doing. Remember, that's why you picked one county so that you can take the information that you've done from those six prior assignments and use it. Use it as it's appropriate. But obviously, you're focusing on what, what the assignment is calling you to do. So, so think about it from that way. So you need to look at what, at hopefully, the way this assignment is structured is that you can take information from the past six assignments and apply it. Um, that will not necessarily be the case with the final. Uh, and the reason why is like with the midterm, you saw that I used a county that was not included in anybody's report that nobody had a, that nobody had signed up for. And that allowed me to make sure that everybody had accurate information. Uh, it allowed me to, uh, to compare based on a base scale. Um, Cause I did the data, I did the analysis myself, but in this case, you are, working with um you are working with one of those counties either if you're a single you're working with your county or if you're working in a team you're working with one of those counties you're taking all this work you've done and hopefully using it to influence this final step which is learning how to do the analysis which is doing some of the analysis and making recommendations um with respect to the powerpoints uh i may I may, as an exercise, follow up and ask you some questions, but um, and, and that will be probably part of what I do in the in the prelim. But um, you know, in the environment, people do ask questions, but sometimes they don't. I've seen it both ways. I know that all of you are trying to uh, minimize weaknesses. No question about it. Okay, are there any other questions? Absolutely. Um, okay, groups of three. Can only one of us present our presentation? If that's how you'd like to do it, that's fine. My preference is I would rather see that, but if you feel like it's in the best interest of your group that only one of you is involved in the presentation, that is okay. Um, but again, that means that that person needs to obviously communicate, know what they're doing. Facts. Um, obviously, you want to incorporate facts based on 
looking at the analysis techniques, the analysis techniques should enable you to present facts. So look at it from that perspective. Remember, there's an analysis component. You've got three different methods that have been presented. You can use just one or a combination of the three. And uh, there's a lot of additional information out there. Obviously, if people have any questions about one of them, you can call, you can ask me. Um, really haven't gotten a lot of questions about this. So, excuse me. Um, you know, look at those methods and hopefully the information you've been pulling throughout the course of this semester about your county or about the county that you've chosen of the three, uh, that will be providing you information to be able to do this presentation and prepare your report. Okay, not a problem. All right, any other questions? Oh, geez. It depends. It depends on if it's actually, you know, food, if it's been done by food coloring or if it's because it's, you know, spoiled. That's, uh, it all depends on the, it depends on the, uh, depends on how it, how you end up getting green eggs and ham. There's many different ways. And especially when you're thinking about Easter time, it, it can be a problem. Okay, it was actually an announcement. I'm sorry, it was an announcement on Blackboard, not, um, and it was included. I mentioned the final in a in an announcement that went through the Blackboard group about the schedule. I have not sent out anything specifically about the final, but I did include the final in a schedule. So it's not been sent out directly, but there will be an email going out tomorrow or Wednesday about the final. So looking at the radar, it looks like there are boomers uh, in Greenville at the moment. We got some more coming our way here in Rocky Mount. Uh, are there any other questions at this point? Okay, yeah, let me do that real quick. So Betty, I'm going to answer, I'm typing this in right now. Yes, you can choose for only one student in the group to present live or recorded. Um, Obviously, if you're doing the project yourself, you've got to present yourself. That That's hopefully um, pretty easy. Okay, are there any other questions? I'm glad the Wi-Fi is picked up. I had to dis my computers on battery and other stuff because of the uh, just not wanting to have a, I mean, we've got a lot of surge here, protectors here, but don't want to end up having there be having a loose wire so any other questions okay seeing none 
Uh, I am going to go ahead and wrap this presentation up, wrap this webinar up. It's gone pretty well. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Uh, I know we've had a couple who had to uh, skip out uh, early, probably because they're also dealing with the weather. But thank you, everybody. And again, remember uh, what we talked about, that the that your draft presentations are due to me on Thursday by midnight, by, by, by 11.59 p.m. Thursday. Your reading assignments are due to be submitted into the Blackboard discussion group by 11.59 p.m. Friday. We are meeting Monday for those who want to come. We are meeting in person, uh, and I put it up here in the chat earlier, uh, in Brewster C105 from 7 to 9 p.m. next Monday. If you want to make, if your group wants to present live, you can choose to present as a recording in your file, or you can choose to present live. I'll leave it up to you. Uh, and also, assignment five and sixth grade should be distributed tomorrow. Uh, see if there's anything else I want to cover. If you if if you turn in your final project draft on time, you should get your any, some comments from me no later than Friday. Um, those were the key things. And then we will have, um, as I said before, uh, let me pull it up. Uh, we, I do hope I will schedule a, a Q and a webinar to review the fight for the review for the final next Tuesday or Wednesday night at nine 30 PM. So it does not conflict with any classroom time, uh, for the classes that are in session. Um, and that's all that I have. So thank you everybody and be safe and i will talk to you all soon if of course if you have any questions you're free to email me at any time uh, i'll do my best to answer as quickly as possible but thank you very much and take care